you have your Bibles, let's turn there. Let's talk about what God said here. Psalm 100, right in the middle of your Bible. Psalm 100. We're in a new series uh, uh, for the last several weeks here. Uh, uh, we're calling Then Sings My Soul. It's a series uh, about worship. We're learning about worship from Psalm 100. Learning to live a life and lifestyle of worship. Uh, learning about not just holding on to, to, to traditions of having weekly worship services, but to have a church culture a true and genuine and Holy Spirit filled uh, a praise and worship and, and an encounter with the living God, our Savior, our Lord. We're learning uh, that the true worship of God results in the change of our life, that genuine worship conforms us to the image of the Lord Jesus. We're being reminded that worship is about God. Yes, we're engaged. Yes, we participate, but we're worshiping God, not ourselves. Our service, the services, worship service, don't revolve around us, but around God. God's calling us back to that for which he created us, to worship him and enjoy him forever. So we looked a few weeks ago at worship uh, in part one. Our highest occupation is the worship of God. Then we talked about in part two the, the kind of worship that God desires and deserves. Last week we talked about worship service or worship serve us. The, the, the true worship of God leads to service for God. And that our service for God is an act of worship to God. Our work for the Lord can become worship to the Lord. Now today in part four, I want to speak from the word of God about the kind of music that God likes. The kind of singing that God likes. In Psalm 100, we're, we're called to shout gleefully and to serve gladly and to sing gloriously to our God. And so we want to talk about the kind of music that God likes. Now, when we talk about music in the church, about what we sing in worship services, it's gotten, in a whole lot of churches, it's gotten all messed up, right? It's become a battleground in a lot of churches. Uh, many have forgotten who the worship is for, you know, what the focus is to be upon. Many have held to traditions tightly and not to the clear teachings of the Word of God. Many have made worship and music and made, it a sh uh, made worship services, made it a show. In some places, it's been a fashion show, right? Some places, it's been a red carpet show of celebrity members or celebrity leaders. So many times it's become an entertainment show, and I would tell you that, that that entertainment can be true and is true in both traditional services, contemporary services, and modern services, and blended services, where uh, in, in any of those kinds of things it can become entertainment where it becomes a lot about what we like or dislike and what the people like or dislike. In too many churches, many evaluate the worship services and the, the worship experience. Well, did you get anything out of that? I didn't get anything out of that. or, or what, we, we make it, base it, and evaluate it on whether we got anything out of it or not, but not on whether God got anything out of it. That's what we ought to be asking when we leave today. Instead of leaning over and, and saying, kids, y'all get anything out of that today? Or honey, did you get anything out of that today? We ought to be asking, hey, did God get anything out of what we did today in this hour and 15 minute service or whatever? Listen, our worship is not to be a playground where we just enjoy ourselves and uh, entertain ourselves and exalt ourselves. It's not to be a battleground fighting with one another over preferences, uh, over music preferences and fighting the worship pastor over music preferences. Worship is not to be a playground or a battleground. It's holy ground where we meet with God with humble hearts and grateful hearts. We stand in awe of God and we give Him the glory that is due to His name. We exalt the Lord in our praise and our adoration. We express our love and our devotion and our surrender to Him. And it's where we hear God and we respond in faith and trust, in, in love and surrender and obedience to Him. And our lives are not the same because of it. So I want us to look in the Word of God uh, into the Bible and look, uh, learn about music in the church, about singing in the worship of God. And I really believe that if we learn what God has to teach us and believe that and trust that and embrace that and live that, I believe that instead of worship wars in the church, we could have some revival in the church. Amen? A, a revival of God-centered worship, a revival of joy and unity and enthusiasm and holiness and godliness and usefulness. Now, your Bible and my Bible here, it has a lot to say about music and about singing. The scriptures resound with singing. 
In fact, there are over 50 commands in your Bible and mine that we have with us today. We have over 50 commands that tell us to sing. They aren't suggestions, Brother Warren, they're not recommendations, are they? 50 commands that tell us to sing. And singing is mentioned over 400 times in the Bible. The Bible has a lot to say about music and singing. And you know, in fact, the Bible tells us God sings. Yeah, Zephaniah 3.17, the Lord your God is in your midst. He is mighty to save and he will exalt, exalt over you with joy. He will renew you in his love and he will rejoice over you with singing. Singing honors and blesses and worships God. Psalm 22, 3, God is enthroned or he inhabits the praises of his people. Uh, we're to come before him with joyful singing here in this psalm. We're to enter his gates with thanksgiving, into his courts with praise, give thanks to his name and, and, and bless his name. Joy, uh, singing honors, blesses and worships God. It expresses our joy and our gratitude and our love to God. I, I love Psalm uh, 92. It's good to give thanks to the Lord and sing praises to your name, to declare your loving kindness in the morning, your faithfulness by night. For you have made me glad by what you have done. I will sing for joy at the works, uh, works of your hands. Uh, the Bible tells us that singing teaches us. It reminds us, it says in the New Testament. Uh, it's a witness to others. Uh, Psalm 40, he said, uh, God put a new song in my heart, uh, a song of praise to our God. Many will see it in fear and will trust in the Lord. Singing is, uh, does so much for the Christian and uh, in our worship and relationship with God and our witness to others. Now, when it comes to music in worship services, you know, it's so often we're so concerned about the music that we like and that we like to sing. And can I just go ahead and put you all at rest and, and, and at ease? It's okay to like what you like. Y'all feel better? Okay. Preacher got up there and told me I can't like that. No, I didn't. Okay? It's okay to like what you like. Okay? But remember, worship is more about God than it is about you or about me or about anybody else. Right? Now, most people focus about the, on the music and songs that they themselves like and love. But remember, worship is to God. He's the focus. He's the object of our worship. We are singing. And when we sing, we are singing to God. Francis Chan is a, uh, was a, used to pastor a church, I think it was in California. A person came up to Pastor Chan after the worship service and said, well, I didn't like the music that we did, uh, I didn't like the music that we did today. Pastor said, that's okay, we weren't worshiping you. <laughs> now listen, it's okay to like what you like, but we need to remember that first and foremost, worship uh, 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 and singing and worship is first and foremost about God. It's about what He likes. We're so concerned, so focused, and I would say so insistent about the kind of music we like and that we like to sing and we like to hear, but we ought to be more concerned, we ought to be most eager to know and to sing the kind of music God likes. And so the question is, what kind does He like? Uh, what does He want us to sing? What does He want to hear and listen to? Well, let's read in Psalm 100, and, uh, and then we'll look... Uh, there and, and through other places in the Word of God. The Word of God says, Shout joyfully to the Lord, or make a joyful noise to the Lord, all the earth. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before Him with joyful singing. Know that the Lord Himself is God. It is He who made us, and not we ourselves. Some translation says, It is He that has made us, and, and we are His. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him. Bless his name. For the Lord is good. His loving kindness is everlasting and his faithfulness to all generations. We're going to focus on that, that phrase here today in verse 2. Come before him with joyful singing. The kind of music that God likes. Pray with me, would you? <coughs> Heavenly Father, thank you for the word today. Thank you for your presence here. Thank you for your Holy Spirit. Thank you for what we've already experienced in worship. God, now we open your word. We've read your word. You have spoken. Lord, may we hear what you're saying. May we understand the truth and the message of your word today and that we would, uh, you would reorient us uh, in our worship, in our perspective, our attitude, our, our uh, participation. 
And Lord, that you'd be exalted, that it would be like revival uh, here. It would be like uh, holy ground here, not a playground or a battleground. We're on holy ground. Speak to us now, Lord. I pray the words of my mouth, I pray that the meditations of my heart be acceptable and pleasing to you. Speak to us now, Lord. Your servants are listening. And we pray in Christ's name. Amen. <coughs> We've seen that this psalm tells us that we are to shout joyfully, but also to sing joyfully. Come before him with joyful singing. He says, come. Uh, don't not come. <laughs> Don't stay away because you don't like the singing or you don't like the songs or you don't like certain instruments uh, or because everything doesn't suit you. He says, come. We ought to come because God's here. We ought to come because he's good and worthy. We ought to come because you can and should express your love and your worship and your appreciation and your attention and your love and devotion to God. We come uh, uh, because it's not just personal. Worship is not just personal and individualistic. But it's also God's people gathered together to worship God. Psalm 34, verse 3. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name together. We ought to come because God's people gather to praise him and to listen to him and surrender and devote ourselves to the Lord. Come before him with joyful singing. And so when it comes to the worship service, when it comes to the music and singing, what is God like? What does he want? What does he expect from us? What kind of songs, what kind of singing, what kind of music does God want us to sing and that he wants to hear? Glad you asked the question. Here it is. Number one, uh, psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs. I read in Ephesians chapter 5. So then do not be foolish, but understand what the will of the Lord is. And do not get drunk with wine, for that is dissipation. But be filled with the Holy Spirit, speaking to one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody with your heart to the Lord. Colossians 3. 16 and 17, let the word of Christ richly dwell within you with all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another with psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with thankfulness in your hearts. Whatever you do and word or do, deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks through him to God the Father. So God wants us to sing psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs. Listen, not hymns only, not choruses only, not traditional or contemporary or modern only but psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs. Now, what are psalms? Obviously, it was, uh, there's a whole, there's 150 of them right there in the middle of your Bible. Those, that was the hymn book. That was the song book of Israel. And, that, and so we think about that. We, uh, scripture songs. When, when we sing psalms, we're singing uh, Holy Spirit-inspired, perfect-inspired Word of God. We're singing words directly from Scripture. These are, these are given and written by the Holy Spirit. Okay? And then there are hymns. <clears throat> We're to sing hymns. A song, it's a song that gives praise, honor, and thanksgiving to God. It may be a song that extols the character and works of God. Hymns often recite a lot of doctrinal truths. They are filled with scriptural truth and sound doctrine. Now, unlike Psalms, hymns are not written by divine inspiration of the Holy Spirit. So they're not considered scripture, although I'll tell you there are a couple places in the New Testament where there are hymns that have been included in the New Testament. But by and large, psalms are come from the Holy Spirit. Hymns are people who, uh, are written by people. Okay? Hymns are often songs of doctrine <clears throat> that declare who God is. That have come maybe from a previous generation and it will long endure. We sang one that has long endured. Uh, amazing grace and how great thou art. I would add that, uh, and remind us all, that you know that new hymns are being written and sung by the church even today. Uh, God inspires praise in every generation. And God's inspiring believers in this generation. God is teaching his truth to this generation. They're going to write songs about it and hymns about it that will be sung both now and down the road. You know, City of Light, uh, Sovereign Grace Music, uh, the Gettys, others are writing new hymns. And then it says we're to sing not only psalms and hymns, but spiritual songs. Those songs offer believers the opportunity to express our personal responses to God. In other words, not just singing about God, but singing to God, right? Singing spiritual songs, singing to God, proclaiming where God has moved in our life and, and, and how he's shown his love and, exp and, and us expressing our love back to God. Songs about the Christian life. 
Psalms that will witness to other believers and also to the lost, declaring what God has done for us and what He can do in them and for them. A spiritual song might praise God directly. It might express the joy of your salvation. It might revel in the grace of God. It might exalt the greatness and power of God. It might share our love and devotion to the Lord. But we're to sing psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs. Some of those songs are about the Lord. And they speak to us and speak to one another, right? We teach and, uh, one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, right? Some songs are about the Lord. Some songs are to the Lord. You're talking directly to God. It's almost like a, a prayer. It's, it, it's, a, it's worship. It's telling God, talking to God directly that we love him and trust him and, and uh, have been blessed by him. Some songs are about the Lord. Some are to the Lord. All of our songs are to be for the Lord, for the glory of God. Now, the Ephesians passage that I gave you there in the Colossians, um, God's word instructs us uh, there about music. But it's, it's preceded, if you go and look at the context of that, it's preceded by, uh, in Ephesians, to be filled with the Holy Spirit. And Colossians uh, talks about uh, the Word of God filling us, right? Uh, being, uh, dwelling in us. Here's the point. When you and I are filled with the Holy Spirit, when you and I are filled with the God's Holy Word, then psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs are the natural expression of our hearts. A Spirit-filled person is a singing person. And one thing, a clear indication that a person is filled with the Spirit is a natural desire to sing and praise God. And listen, musical ability has very little to do with that. As I've said before, and I'm not pointing anybody out, <laughs> you might sing like a dying elephant. I mean, that may be your voice. But I'm just saying, it's a, uh, when you're singing from the heart and you're singing in praise to God, I'm saying God thinks it's all right. So we're, talking, we're not talking about abilities. We're talking about the heart. God created us to find great spiritual expression through music. Psalm 135 verse 3, praise the Lord, or hallelujah in the Hebrew. For the Lord is good. Sing praise to his name for it's lovely. And scripture is filled with music. And God delights it when we use what he created to worship him. Psalm 149, praise the Lord. Sing to the Lord a new song and his praise in the congregation of the godly ones. Let Israel be glad in his maker. Let the sons of Zion rejoice in their king. Let them praise his name with dancing. Let them sing praise to him with timbrel and lyre. Let the godly ones exult in glory. Let them sing for joy on their beds and let the high praises of God be in their mouth. Psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs. Some of those songs are, uh, really speak of the transcendence of God. Others deal with the imminence of God, that God is near. We need balance. We need both of those, not either or. We need songs about the transcendence of God and the imminence of God. We ought to accept both of those. Okay? We ought to appreciate both, and we ought to sing both. Warren Wiersbe said, we need balance. We need the transcendent experience that can come when we sing a psalm or a hymn. And we need the sense of God's nearness that we may experience singing a praise chorus. The younger generation needs to appreciate and use the psalms and hymns. And the older generation ought to learn to appreciate and use the spiritual songs and praise choruses. Not either or, but both and. And we could and should and end the so-called worship wars in the church and in this church if we would focus on the Lord, be glad about singing what God likes, psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs, and stop criticizing and start singing like never before and worship His holy name. God likes that. Number two, God likes us to sing new songs. Did you know that nine times... In the Bible, we're taught or we're told to sing to the Lord a new song. Now, I listed those for you right there in your notes, okay? And then when you read those, you're going to find that both now and when we get to heaven, we are and will sing to the Lord a new song, okay? Now, if the Bible tells us to sing to the Lord a new song. In each of those passages, new means original, fresh, one of a kind, never seen before, or of course in this case, never heard before. We are told by the Lord, we're told by God, we're told in His Word to sing new songs. Why? Because God inspires praise in every generation. Listen, God did not stop inspiring praise and songwriting in 1708, 1808, 1908, or 2008. In every generation, 
ever for over two thousand years and actually you go back into israel even before that god was inspiring praise one guy wrote he said i'm not aware of any command in the bible to sing old songs it's not disobedient to sing old songs. Y'all okay? All right. It's not disobeying. You're not sinning against God by singing an old song. Okay. But it's not, it's just simply not something God needs to remind us to do. Our inertia is toward humming and singing and selecting the stuff we already know. We already like the songs we like after all, right? What we don't know yet is the new songs. It takes some energy to write them and to learn them. So the scriptures need to remind us again and again to sing a new song. Psalm 40, and verse 3, he put a new song in my mouth, a song of praise of God, uh, to our God. When you look back, you, you understand why he burst out in song uh, from his heart. He said, I waited patiently for the Lord. And he inclined his ear and heard my cry. He brought me up out of the pit of misery, out of the pit of destruction, out of the miry clay. He set my feet upon a rock, making my footsteps firm. And he put a new song in my mouth, a song of praise for our God. Many will see it and fear and will trust the Lord. Listen, new songs of praise are uh, appropriate for new rescues and for new manifestations of God's grace. And as long as God is gracious towards us, and as long as He keeps showing us His power, and as long as He keeps uh, wowing us with His works, as long as He keeps answering prayers, it is fitting that we not just sing old songs inspired by His past grace, but that we sing new songs about His ever-streaming and never-ceasing grace. God's a creative God. He's always doing something new, like saving and intervening and answering prayers and working miracles. And so forever... Now and forever, God will continue to show the immeasurable riches of His grace towards us in Christ Jesus. And as He does that, for His glory and for our joy, we will keep singing new songs. Isaiah told the people in his day, through him God said, uh, forget the former things and do not dwell on the past. See, I'm doing a new thing. Now it springs up. Do you not perceive it? I'm making a way in the wilderness. I'm making streams in the wasteland. But before he ever said that, he said, Behold, the former things have come to pass. New things I now declare. Before they spring forth, I tell you of them, Sing to the Lord a new song. Sing praise from the ends of the earth. A new song has been heard from people of every generation. Sung by believers who have tasted and seen the goodness and kindness of the Lord. From the days of old and for all eternity and throughout the earth and then before the throne of God, we are going to be singing new songs. You can sing the old ones, but don't refuse to sing the new ones because God's doing something. Amen? Psalm 98, Oh, sing to the Lord a new song, for he has done wonderful things. His right hand and his holy arm have gained victory for him. Okay? So what kind of music and singing does God like? He likes songs, hymns, and spiritual songs. He likes new songs. Number three, he likes uh, us to sing sincerely, not hypocritically. Not hypocritically. When you read in the Old Testament, back in the um, uh, last part of your, your Old Testament, Amos chapter 5, God, God, God made it clear what he thought about a lot of what goes on when we gather. I know God's a God of love and everything, but there's some things that God hates. Is what Amos 5, verse 21 I hate that I reject your festivals. I don't delight in your solemn assemblies. Even though you offer up to me burnt offerings and your grain offerings, I won't accept them. I will not even look at the peace offerings of your fatlings. Take away from me the noise of your songs. I'm not even going to listen to your instruments, to the sound, to the, the sound of your harps. But let justice roll down like waters and righteousness like an ever-flowing stream. They weren't living righteously. They weren't uh, into mercy and justice. But they come and they play church. In this case, they play t temple or tabernacle or synagogue. You know, They come and play it. Pretending. It was hypocritical. They were saying one thing to God, but they were living another way at home and out in the world. He said, your songs, you know, stop singing. Stop it. <laughs> You know, sometimes instead of worshiping God, we're wearing him out. And he says, enough. Enough of that. 
God likes us to sing sincerely, genuinely, not hypocritically, not with simple hearts and simple attitudes and lives. Not to sing with a disobedient heart, a rebellious attitude, or to sing flippantly or apathetically, but to sing sincerely and not sing lifelessly, not without passion. Sometimes, you know, we can just honestly say, you know, well, we can just sing it, you know. Just going through the motions are mindlessly mouthing words. Lord, where's we said we often hold the hymnal or an archive, sing off the screen and sing songs that we know so well, but our hearts and our minds are a million miles away. So he said, think and think about and rejoice in the words you sing. Not just the routine, okay, we'll, we'll sing three or four songs and then there's preaching and then we'll go and get lunch. You know, just going to go through the motions, go through the routines. No, sing sincerely. Sing, sing sincerely. That's what God likes. Here's number four. So, uh, not only uh, sincerely, but uh, God likes us to sing, number four, from the heart. In the Ephesians passage and the Colossians passage I already mentioned, it says singing and making melody with your heart to the Lord. Colossians says singing with thankfulness in your hearts to God. You know, when, when, when God has saved you and rescued you, when he's brought you up from the mess that you were in, when he has brought you up and set you on a firm foundation and, and secured your footing, and when God has put a new song in your heart, you'll want to sing that song <laughs> from the heart with your voice to God. Psalm 104, 33, I will sing to the Lord as long as I live. or and I will sing praise to my God while I have my being. What kind of music does God like? He likes it when we sing with our whole heart for our whole life. Whatever time you got left, yet your whole heart and the rest of your life uh, worship and sing to God from the heart. Number five. You're afraid I wasn't going to get moving here. Number five. Uh, God likes us to sing with gratitude and thanksgiving. Again, Colossians 3.16, singing with thankfulness in your heart to God. We can sing thankfully because of who God is. Because uh, for what God has done, what he has done for us and to us and in us and through us. Psalm 28, verse 7. The Lord is my strength and my shield. My heart trusts in him and I am helped. Therefore, my heart exalts and with my song I shall thank him. When they, we sang those great songs a while ago. Did you, were you thanking God with your singing today? Or were you just mouthing words? What was in your heart? Did you sing from a grateful heart? Here's number six. God likes us to sing not only with grateful hearts, but with victorious hearts. With victory and freedom. Singing joyfully, but singing uh, victoriously. And, and what I mean by that is, when you look at Psalm 137, they're the... They are in exile in Babylon. And their captors, their tormentors, were saying to the, to the Jews, they said, sing to us one of the songs of Zion. Sing to us one of the old songs from back where you were. And, and here, here's what the psalmist said. He said, how can we sing the Lord's song in a foreign land? Or how can we sing the Lord's song in a strange and distant land? What land was that? It was Babylon. It was the land of bondage, the land of captivity. You know why in our churches a lot of people don't sing? Well, they can, it's because they can't sing victoriously. They don't sing joyfully. Why? Because they're in bondage. Many are in bondage. They're not living in victory. They've, they're not, uh, uh, they, they've lost the joy. Many of them are captive to sin. Of all descriptions, it could be, and it could be a captive to the sin of fear or worry or love of money or insecurity or addictions of every kind. And so that, you know, somebody's uh, singing victoriously, somebody's giving testimony of what God's done in their life and, and they're not experiencing it. They're still in captivity. And so there's no joy and no victory to sing. And so either it's just lifeless singing or no singing at all. Because of captivity. How can we sing God's songs when we're in captivity? Can I ask you this morning? Is there anything hindering your singing today? Or, or, or you know, not just today, but, you know, in general. You know, is there something hindering your singing? 
If so, don't go into a, a depressive tailspin. Go to God. He knows it. He knows you, and he loves you. Somebody glad about that this morning? <laughs> and if there's sin, confess it. Turn away from that and turn to God. Repent. Surrender the Lord and be filled with the Holy Spirit. And the Bible says, 2 Corinthians 3.17, where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. There's liberty. You want to be free? I'm not, because sometimes you, you, people might hear something like this and then they want to try to put on or give the appearance of joy. Give the appearance of victory. God's not interested in that and neither are you. God wants you to have liberty and freedom. Victory in your life. Joy in your life. Go to God for that stuff. And where the Spirit of the Lord is, there's freedom. Here's the last thing. I really did get there. Okay. Number, number seven. God likes us to sing not only psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs. God likes us to sing new songs and sing sincerely and from the heart and with thanksgiving and gratitude and with victory. God wants us, as we see in Psalm 100, verse 2, God likes us to sing with joy. Okay, That's what the verse says. Come before him with joyful singing. We have so much to sing for, so much to sing about, so much to sing to someone, the Lord, right? Muslims don't sing songs in their worship. Okay? Buddhists don't sing songs to worship God. Psalm 59, but as for me, I will sing about your power. Each morning I will sing with joy about your unfailing love. For you've been my refuge, a place of safety when I'm in distress. Oh, my strength, to you I sing praises. To, for you, O oh God, are my refuge, the God who shows me unfailing love. Listen, we, God likes us to sing joyfully, and, and, and we can because of who he is and what he's done. Do you know joy, the Bible tells us, is one of the fruits or evidences that the Holy Spirit is in us and, and, and at work and unhindered in our life. Joy is a fruit of the Spirit. It comes from the inside. It's a work of the Holy Spirit. And He produces joy in the heart and life when you and I yield and surrender ourselves to Him. So when, when you let the Holy Spirit fill you and lead you, when you let Him comfort you and encourage you and teach you and guide you and remind you, rather than us grieving the Spirit or, or quenching the Spirit or resisting the Spirit or lying to the Spirit or disobeying the Spirit, but when we are filled with the Spirit, the Holy Spirit produces joy in your heart and life. And you will naturally sing joyfully in your heart and from your mouth. Let me ask you, do you, do you need some help with your singing today? Do you need some help with singing joyfully? Then yield yourself to the Holy Spirit. Let Him empty you of yourself and let Him fill you with Himself. And we'll fill you with joy. Warren, uh, Brother Warren posted... Uh, on Facebook not too long ago. Worship is our response to what Christ has done in us, not what our songs do to us. Worship is our response to what Christ has done in us, not our, what our songs do to us. Psalm 95, oh come. Let us sing for joy to the Lord. Let us shout joyfully to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving. Let's shout joyfully to him with psalms. Psalm 96, sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord all the earth. Sing to the Lord, bless his name. Proclaim good tidings of his salvation from day to day. Tell of his glory among the nations, his wonderful deeds among all the people. For great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. He is to be feared above all gods. For all the gods of the peoples are idols, but the Lord made the heavens. Splendor and majesty are before him. Strength and beauty are in his testimony. Uh, are in his sanctuary, excuse me. The kind of music God likes. The kind of worship that he desires and deserves. Let's never allow our worship to become routine or artificial or hypocritical or self-centered. You know, we shared it with those couples a while ago to, that we're called to love the Lord our God with all our heart, mind, soul, and strength, right? Well, let our worship of God, our singing to God, be an expression of that love with all of our heart, all of our mind, our soul, and our strength. The kind of music and singing God likes. Let's, let's remember who it's all about. It's about Him. It's for Him. Let's focus on what God likes, what God desires, and what God deserves, and what God has directed 
Let's pray for our worship pastor, for Brother Warren, every week to lead us in God-inspired worship, to prepare and lead us in the kind of worship, the kind of music that God likes. Let's not be critical. Let's be prayerful. Amen, Brother Jamie. That's a good word. Let's not be critical. Let's be prayerful and, and, let's, and encouraging. And every Sunday, every week, every time we come before God, Let's come with our hearts prepared. Let's come full of the Holy Spirit. Let's come prayed up. Let's come ready to worship God. Let's come ready to sing songs that God likes. And let's come before Him with joyful singing. Amen? Amen. 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 Stand with me. I want you to sing with me. Then sings my soul, my Savior God to Thee. How great Thou art, how great Thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to Thee. How great Thou art, how great Father, in Jesus' name, what a joy it's been to be here.